Howdy, folks. Woodja Wallace from NeedCoffee.com here. It's back with another Way Homer review. For the uninitiated. There I am. For the uninitiated, here's how this works. Uh, just left the cinema, and we're going to discuss a film as I drive home. Hence, Way Homer. And we're here today to talk about the A Team. All right, now, so A Team, what can we say? Uh, synopsis. Synopsis is as follows the, um, There is a crack commando unit for four Army Rangers who are badasses. And basically, they uh, perform missions that nobody else can do, type of thing. And they get framed for a crime they did not commit and are dishonorably discharged as a result of it and uh, have to clear their name. That's pretty much it. Um, and it's based on the television show of the same name. And, uh, I mean, here's the thing. Um, when you look back on television shows that are being remade into films, and you can do this especially now that everything's coming out on DVD, and I'm not saying this specifically about the A-Team, but in a lot of cases, you watch the shows that you grew up watching, and you had, had this kind of like idealized, almost platonic form of the, of, the, of the show, and then you watch them again and you go, oh God. So, I mean, that happens. However, with the A-Team, what's weird about the A-Team is, I don't know that anybody has kind of like an idealized form of the show. Um, we all kind of, you know, because I've, I've talked about the A-Team, uh, on and off for a while, Dragon Con, other places, and we kind of all understand what the show was, which was just supposed to be um, entertaining and not much else. So, um, you know, you always had, they would go after the bad guys, and they would get kind of in a bad situation, and then they would have to kind of, you know, make a... Uh, make a tank out of a mattress and a head of cabbage and a box of toothpicks and maybe, you know, book of matches. Um, and, and, you know, the da, 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 da music would play. And so you had that going on. Um, but, uh, oh, and, and then, you know, no way you would ever get shot. And, and if you think about it, if you think about it, MacGyver really is kind of like just the A-team compressed into one person. But anyway, so the deal is this. Um, the trailer kind of portrayed it as just a fun, kind of goofy movie, action film, and I'm like, I was totally fine with that. The, really, the only problem that I had was that I was concerned that you had somebody playing a character who was so completely and totally Mr. T, who was not Mr. T. Because I, I didn't know Rampage from, you know, a hole in the ground. To me, you say Rampage, and I'm thinking about a video game where you, you know, become a kaiju and beat the crap out of buildings. So what do I know? But anyway, so uh, so I was a little uh, apprehensive um, because of this. But um, here's the thing. I had a blast. I had a really good time with this movie. Um, pretty much almost everything worked. Uh, you had, you know, with the casting, first of all, Liam Neeson is Hannibal, which you, first you go, really? Liam Neeson, you signed up for this? But if you think about it, they somehow got George Papard to sign up to be uh, to Hannibal originally, so it makes kind of sense. Um, so he's excellent. Bradley Cooper makes a great face. Um, the guy whose name I can't ever remember from District 9, sorry guy, uh, but you know how bad I am with names. The guy from District 9 is Murdoch, which is fantastic casting. And then the Rampage guy was really good. Um, I think if, if anything, if I had problems with anything, it's just some of the action sequences, like we talked about before, were a little too crazy jump cut, um, so, so you couldn't really tell what was going on. Sometimes it wasn't as bad, though. Um, so just a little bit there, and the end got a little ludicrous, but if you think about it from the standpoint of by that point in the film, you've seen so many ludicrous things that turning ludicrous up to 11, um, you're either invested by that point or you're not. And I was pretty much in it, so I said, guys, just go. Do whatever you want to do, right? So I was kind of fine with it. Um, so those were about the only two things that kind of disturbed me a little bit. But other than that, I had a blast. Um, they, had, they got a lot done. They did kind of what is essentially two origin stories in one. Um, and, you know, they had arcs for the characters, uh, you know, pretty much. Um, 
that were satisfying and you had villains that were fully realized and you knew who the hell they were supposed to be. Um, so yeah, it was a lot of fun and lots of stuff blew up, which is basically what the trailer promised me and it delivered. A fun popcorn film uh, that, you know, blows things up and entertains and this sells it perfectly. Now here's the thing, here's a true test, is that I actually want a sequel. Now I don't think I'm gonna get one because I actually did look while the credits were rolling, while I was waiting, and by the way, stay for the end of the credits. Um, I was waiting, I looked it up because I'm like, oh, I want a sequel, I'm not gonna get a sequel. And right now, box office wise, worldwide, it's only made 110 million, which is about what it costs to make it, and that's without marketing. So I just don't know. I don't know if we're gonna get a sequel or not. I'd love one though. If they did another movie like this one, I'd be all over it. Uh, lots of fun. So, yeah, I would say if you are as excited about the Summer of Explodo as I am, and as apprehensive as I am, um, don't be worried. Go catch at least a matinee, because I think with all the stuff blowing up, it deserves to be seen on the big screen. But see a matinee to save yourself a few bucks, okay, and go and enjoy it. Um, I don't think it's going to be the same uh, on the big screen uh, at home, or the medium screen, or whatever the hell size screen you have. So, uh, so yeah. So make sure you catch that. And, uh, and I would say if anybody was trying to remake, uh, you know, a fun film, this would be one to study up on because I think it did its job. So there you go. Uh, so, yeah, I would say a solid four cups. Definitely. Could have been a little bit more if it had toned down the shaky cam and, and, and kind of uh, uh, dialed back the end a little bit. But still, a solid four cups. Very satisfied with it. Very happy. So there you go. That's the 18. Um... So I'm driving, so I can't really wave to you right now. I can wave, but I can't say anything. I can't say anything directly to you. It's late. We saw a late show. I don't know where I am anymore. Um, but I will say this. Uh, thanks to everyone. Keep those cards and letters coming. Um, if you enjoy these things, tell a friend about us. Uh, make sure you befriend us on Facebook and all that good stuff. And uh, if you'd like to support what we're doing on Need Coffee with all these crazy videos and stuff, make sure you go to needcoffee.com slash membership. That's how we did things like pay for this spiffy high-def camera that's pointed at my head right now. So until next time, I will see you guys later. Bye.